Hey y'all, I'm Kathy. Checking back in after about a two month hiatus. If you're just finding this or checking me out, let me just quickly say that I've been losing weight this year using the Galveston Diet, which is a new book this year written by an OBGYN for women in perimenopause, menopause, or postmenopause, which I'm post um, due to a forced hysterectomy in my 30s. So I've been in postmenopause for a while. And if you're facing that, then you know that it wreaks havoc on your body. And then one of the things it does is it makes it really hard to lose weight weight. So I had tried every diet after packing on um, some pounds and um, I turned to the Galveston diet as like a last resort. So you can check out some of my previous videos to uh, see my journey. She's got recipes in the book and I go through a lot of the recipes and give my opinion on them. Um, and I go through her four week meal plan where the recipes are and lose some weight there. So you can rewind, look me up, but this is more of an update for my followers to let you know what's been going on the past two months, um, what my mindset is going into the holidays, and really just to say hey. <laughs> so, um, okay, here we go. Let's answer two big questions about the Galveston diet and about my journey. The first is, am I going to reach my goal? My goal was to lose about 45 pounds before my 50th birthday. And the second big question that everybody wants to know and that I wanted to know when I started this journey was, is the Galveston diet sustainable? That's the biggie, right? So why invest in a diet? And I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about emotions and hope and the time it takes um, and especially with this diet, it's a little bit high maintenance. You have to track macros and then you have to go through the pain of intermittent fasting, which ramping up to doing an intermittent fasting can be um, a little difficult. Once you get into it, it's not that hard. All of that, um, is it worth it to go through all of that? Is it sustainable? Um, that's the big question, and that's what I wanted to know too. And um, so here's where here's where I am on those two things, and then we'll talk holidays. Um, so as you know, for the past two months, I've been crazy busy because I have two adorable new puppies, and I have to tell you, my life has been so great. I highly recommend getting teddy bear puppies. Highly recommend it. However. <laughs> I have been so pinched for time that I have not even been weighing myself in the morning. It's usually my morning routine is I get up, go straight into the bathroom to change clothes, and I weigh right then. You know, take off the clothes, weigh, see what the scale screams at me, and then I'll get dressed and go on with my day. That's not how it goes when you're potty training puppies. <laughs> when the puppies get up, you get out of bed, you run to the crate, and you go directly outside. <laughs> so I've been sleeping in my yoga pants and whatever um, with my flip-flops right next to my bed so that I can go directly outside at whatever time they wake up. Now, usually we've kind of conditioned them for that to be about five o'clock, but like this morning, it was... 3.30. I think the time change is really messed with them, like it messes with everybody. Every now and then when my husband takes them out first for me, I will get up and go away. So I, I've been keeping track, but not on a daily basis. And I think that has been freeing for me. Um, I'm starting to not I'm sorry, I guess I'm starting to break up with the scale a little bit. I'm not relying on the scale to tell me how I feel because of that. Usually on a diet, if I lose a little bit of weight, let's say two pounds, my mind plays a trick on me and I think, oh, you've lost two pounds. You can afford to eat that cupcake or whatever. Um, and then I sabotage my weight loss. 
not keeping track of it every day, not knowing those minor fluctuations in the scale. I think anything between two and four pounds is kind of a minor fluctuation. Um, has been freeing because I don't convince myself that it's okay to cheat. Now, I have not been perfect at all during this two months. It's been a crazy season. We've celebrated birthdays. Um, my bonus daughter had a birthday. My sister had a birthday. We celebrate, oh, my son had a birthday. Um, we celebrated a lot of things. And then my dad was in the hospital for um, having back surgery and I stayed with him and um, caved one day, got some gummy bears. And then the next day I had to take him back to the hospital when he got discharged for um, a very minor complication and he's okay and doing great. Um, but I was so emotionally exhausted after that day because my dad was exhausted because we had to do a whole bunch of running around that day. Um, that we went to a Mexican restaurant, ate chips and salsa. So I've not at all been perfect, um, but I've been freed from the scale telling me whether or not I feel good, right? And if I'm not paying attention to those minor fluctuations in the scale, I don't think, oh, I lost two pounds, I can cheat. So I've been more consistent at home when I'm not in the hospital and things like that. I've been more consistent at home with eating the Galveston diet way, which is high healthy fat, um, lean proteins, and uh, low carb. So, but the right kind of carbs. Like you can't consider a sugar-free Reese's cup a healthy low carb on the Galveston diet splurge every now and then, but that's not something you would eat. So I have been doing more of a dirty keto version just for transparency um, because I'm not tracking macros right now. Y'all know that I hate tracking macros and I, with the puppies, it's been really hard. I just kind of grab something to eat when I can taking them out. I tell you what, I love these little guys so much, but when you have two puppies, they're on different pee schedule. Ranger, our sweet little boy, he literally has to pee like four times for every one time lady does. And he's really not interested in re ringing the potty bell. <laughs> we trained them to ring a bell. Well, no, we tried to train them. Lady picked it up and she will ring the bell when she needs to go out. But Ranger is like any other typical bratty little brother and is like, why should I do it if I can get my sister to do it for me? <laughs> we almost got to put a three on our incident board. Is this not the cutest thing? I got it on Amazon. <laughs> it's like those little accident um, workplace boards or something. Um, we had a two on it yesterday, but I tell you what, that little ranger, if if he goes onto carpet at all, he there's something in his brain that triggers him. Oh, let me pop a squat right here and pee. So that happened last night after a full day of no accidents. At the very last five minutes, we let him into our bedroom. They like to run around. We call it the no-no room because they're not allowed to go in there because it's the only place in our house they have access to that has carpet. And I always keep the door shut. Let them in at the very last minute and Ranger peed. Right after he had peed outside. Right after he had peed outside. So this was a two, had to put it on zero. But anyway, this is a little fun thing we do. So when you have new puppies, literally these two, I was taking them out every 30 minutes at first. We've had them for about two months now and we're getting so good. I mean, we, like I said, we were almost at three days without an accident and that was the only accident. We, we rarely have an accident um, and then we'll just get like one little accident one day that wrecks our day count. So, uh, it's not all day, every day, like it was at the beginning. Anyway, all of that to say, 
I've been chasing them around, playing with them, training with them, going on walks. I've just been enjoying my life with them and I didn't want to worry about macros, but I was also mindfully eating mostly the Galveston diet way, um, a little bit of dirty keto mixed in um, with that. So that's just to let you know how I've been eating. So here's my mindset going in and kind of about life, okay? So I am not going to reach my goal. That's one of the questions I was going to answer for you. Not going to reach my goal of 40 pounds by my birthday. A miracle would have to happen <laughs> for that to happen. But I'm okay with that. I don't consider this year a failure. I don't consider the Galveston diet a failure for me this year because I'm still down overall 10, 11, 12 pounds, depending on the day, than I was when I started. And I had lost maybe five pounds before that. So I'm really closer to 15, 18 pounds less right now than I was right before Thanksgiving last year. That's a success. That's a win. I'm happy with that because for the first time in about six or seven years, my number is down, not the same, or not higher than it was the year before. Totally stoked about that. So I think it's okay. Here, here's kind of the diet philosophy I've landed on. You know, the Galveston diet, every, every diet says, this is a lifestyle, not you have to commit for the long haul, haul. And I agree with that because I feel like, here's answer to question number two. I feel like it's sustainable if, if you give yourself grace. If you understand that in the weight loss part, you have to sprint and stay focused. And then sometimes you can just kind of stroll through life, celebrate the birthdays, enjoy your new puppies, um, and that kind of thing. And you may not lose any weight during the stroll of life, okay? And that's okay. So I know that next time I'm in a place where my mindset is right and I can focus, that I can drop another five, 10 pounds. But like I said, I'm still less than I was this time last year and at the beginning of the year. So I'm okay with that. I'm in the stroll of this diet right now. I'll sprint again later. I don't know if I'm gonna do it before the holidays, during the holidays whatever. I can sprint again later and there's no reason for me to be upset about this arbitrary goal that I set to lose the weight at 50. I didn't give up and gain it all back when things got hard this summer. Go back and look at some of my other videos if you want to know what I'm talking about because I'm not going there right now. So anyway, just mention the holidays. Let me mention that again. The holidays are coming up. If you're like me and struggle to lose weight or every year you're like, this is the year, like this year, this is the year. And then you get to the end of the year and you've either gained weight or you haven't lost any or like me now, you didn't reach your goal. It's easy to just throw it all out the window and be like, I'm just going to enjoy the holidays and I'll start again in January. No, don't give up the ground you've gained. Don't do that. I am not going to do that. Here's the thing about Thanksgiving and Christmas. And let's back up. Halloween. How did your Halloween go? <laughs> did you binge on candy? I was fortunate enough. That's not right. I was about to say, I was fortunate enough to be in the hospital with my dad on Halloween. Scratch that. I was in the hospital with my dad on Halloween. That was not fortunate. But what it did do is it kept me away from the candy because I wasn't home doing the trick-or-treating. Holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas are coming up. Here's the thing. I think we as Americans tend to, and it may even back up and start at Labor Day, but we're like, 
holidays. We're just going to eat everything from Halloween until about a week after New Year's. And oh, do you hear the doorbell? Lady needs to go outside. Be right back. Yeah. Just wanted to, oh, why are you scared? Wanted to show you my lady. We call her Ladybug. And um, she is four months old now. We've had her for two months. And she's the one that picks up on the training really quickly. She's the one that rang the potty bell. She's a good girl. She is. <laughs> my little girl, after raising three boys, I finally have a little girl. Right? Yeah. And here is my hot mess little puppy ranger <laughs> with a leaf in his mouth. <laughs> He's also four months old. They came from the same litter. They're twins. And he is just a little messy boy, a lot of fun, a lot of personality, but he doesn't really care about the training as much. He'll do it for a treat, but you know, why ring the bell if Sissy will do it for you, right? You can see he's all over the place. That ranger keeps me on my toes, don't you, buddy? Look at his cute little spotted belly. Oh, and his toes. I gotta show you his toes. Look, he's got pink and black toes on one foot. It's my favorite, I love it. <laughs> anyway, so Thanksgiving and Christmas are one day. Okay, let's do the math. Thanksgiving is one day, Christmas is one day, Thanksgiving and Christmas are two days. <laughs> But, so there's no reason to throw your hands up in the air and give up completely for holidays. Don't do that. Do not let your mindset sabotage your diet for the entire two month holiday season. Three month if you count, you know, whatever, Halloween. So the way I'm going into it is I'm treating Thanksgiving as one day to splurge and Christmas as one day to splurge. Two days, that's it. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it exactly, but that's my goal. And if you don't have a goal, then you certainly won't reach it. But if I make that as a goal, then I have a better chance of reaching it. So that's my goal. So, I feel like I've just been rambling and rambling, but is the Galveston diet sustainable? I think it is because last time I weighed myself, I was still in that four pound area that I've been flirting with. I've maintained over the past two months and actually the past week or so, it has been kind of steadily going down. I've been flirting with just two pounds instead of four. so. And that's, that's not me doing it like by the book. So it's been sustainable for me. And in case you don't know, once you're out of the weight loss part where you have to work a little harder, she does have a section in here that talks about maintenance and the macros are different for maintenance. So you're, you don't always have to do it as hard as it is in the beginning. So I really do think that the Galveston diet way is sustainable if you are in the mindset that you're gonna have sprints where you focus harder and then you can just stroll the rest of the time and be really mindful about it and try your best to eat the Galveston diet way. And if your weight starts going up, do another sprint. It doesn't have to be this consuming thing that you hate your life <laughs> because you're doing the diet. It doesn't have to be that way. If you give yourself grace and realize that you, if you're in it for the long haul, you have to know that there's gonna be times that you can just stroll a little bit and enjoy life a little bit. And um, so that's, that's my mindset. That's where I am. I am still wanting to lose more weight, even though I know it's not gonna be by my 50th birthday. But 
I'm just enjoying life. I'm enjoying my dogs. I'm enjoying the fall weather. Um, my son joined the football team, a walk-on as a junior in high school. He's never played football before other than flag football when he was little. And um, so it's a really small school and um, they needed more players. So he just walked on. So that was fun, enjoying Friday night football <laughs> at the high school. Um, it's just been a fun fall. Very busy, but also very fun. And so I want to give y'all permission to stroll. In fact, stroll through the holidays, but don't camp out there. You know what I mean? Enjoy it, but don't camp out. Give yourself some goals and some limitations to stay within, and you'll do fine, I think. Comment below and tell me what you think about that. Um, also wanted to share a recipe with you that I ate a couple weeks ago and that we're eating um, tonight. It's homemade pizza, but it's with the chicken crust. Have y'all ever heard of this? It's a keto recipe, but it's also Galveston because if you, it's chicken and Parmesan cheese and I'll uh, put the recipe below. Um, and it's so, it's a clean recipe. It's a clean, it's clean ingredients, especially if you use like free range chicken. So um, I was extremely skeptical extremely skeptical about this recipe. I thought it's not going to be good. Um, and this is what it looked like before I put it in the oven. It actually looks like pizza dough. And then here's what it looked like after. I forgot to take a picture after I had put the ingredients on. <laughs> But I, you know, put, I had some sugar-free spaghetti sauce and I put that on it and some black olives, mozzarella cheese. I don't think I put meat. Oh no, I did. I put a little bit of sausage um, on it and it was really good. It was really good. In fact, I had made my husband a DiGiorno pizza um, and, and we had mine and he just asked if he could try it because he was curious and he actually liked mine better than DiGiorno, which really surprised me. Now, in reality, is it better than DiGiorno crust? Probably not. Um, but he ate more than one piece of it and he had the option to eat the DiGiorno pizza. So that it was it was good. So I highly recommend if you're getting pizza cravings but want to try to keep it as Galveston as possible, try that recipe. Super yummy. We're, we're eating it again tonight because I um, wanted pizza tonight. So uh, we're eating that tonight. Um, anyway, I know that I have rambled and gone on and on, but it's been a hot minute since I've uh, posted a video. I'm going to try to do them more frequently. Comment below. Let me know if you have any other questions and um, I will check in again in a few weeks. Hopefully <laughs> I have tried and tried and tried to post videos and literally something would happen every time I was about to do it. Like one time I was about to do a video and we ended up having a yellow jacket nest in the backyard and I got stung and I mean just it was, it's been hard to make a video with puppies and with life in general. So I will try again, but I make no promises on when it will happen, but don't give up on your Galveston journey. It is sustainable and it works if you do. So I hope y'all have a great fall and I'll check in with you later. Bye.